Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and today Apple released iOS 16.3 RC or release candidate. This is available to developers and public beta testers and is the final version of iOS 16.3 that gets released to developers and beta testers. And if there's no additional bugs, this will be the final version. You just had it early. Now this particular update came in at 5.35 gigabytes. That's on the iPhone 14 pro max. And it's a pretty large install because anytime you go from a beta to a final version, it's going to reinstall the OS. Now, if you are a beta tester and wondering if you should remove the beta profile yet, I typically say, wait a minute in just maybe a few days, just because they may actually do a release candidate too. We've seen that in the past, although it's unlikely we could see that. So just wait. And additionally, if there's no issues, this will be the final version. We just had it early. Now this released alongside a lot of other updates. So for example, we had iPad OS 16.3 RC, Mac OS 13.2 RC, watch OS 9.3 RC, TV OS and HomePod OS 16.3 RC and iOS 15.7.3 RC and the iPad OS version of that as well. So all of those are available for developers right now and should be out to the public fairly soon. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings then we'll go down to general, then about, and as you can see, the build number is two zero D four seven, and that should be the final build number. As long as there's no additional issues, Apple also updated the modem on the 14 pro max and other phones as well to version 1.41.02 on the 14 pro max. It could be a different version for you, depending on which phone you have. Now, as far as what's new, the first thing is an all new wallpaper today, Apple announced a few products. And one of the things they announced was a new black unity watch band and matching watch face. So if we go into our wallpapers, we'll add a new one here. If we scroll down, you'll see unity and we've got a couple different wallpapers. So it says designed by black creatives and allies at Apple to honor black history and culture. And if we tap on the unity wallpaper, we have some color options. So if we scroll to the right, we have black, red, orange, green, blue, purple, pink, cream, and gray. Additionally, if we tap on the clock, we have a new font here also. So it's a new bold font that's more rounded and that's available for this specific wallpaper with some color options for the font being white and black or more of a gray or whatever you want to customize it to. So that's available with 16.3. Now with this update, Apple actually introduced security keys for Apple ID. This is a great way to log into your device more securely, and it can be found under settings. Then if you tap on your name at the top and then tap on passwords and security under passwords and security, you'll see, you'll have the option for add security keys. And as you can see, I have a security key here and we have a new menu that says a FIDO certified security key is third party hardware that you can use for two factor authentication when you sign in. So instead of just getting a, a little prompt from your phone number, now you can use a security key. So we'll tap on add security key. You'll need two of these and then we'll tap continue. Give it just a moment. And as long as it has NFC or plugs into your lightning port, you'll be able to add it. So we'll click tap continue and wait just a moment put in our passcode. We can then bring the security key to the top of the phone where it's NFC and then add the first key and then name it. Once we've named the first one, we'll name the second. It will enable the security key. And then you can log in using this to be physically present when you log into your account for higher security. So that's something available with 16.3. In addition to the security keys, if you're in settings, tap on your name and then tap on iCloud under iCloud in the United States before we had advanced data protection. Now this is rolled out globally with iOS 16.3. So you'll be able to have end to end encryption for your device backup messages, iCloud drive, and much more. So I'm glad that Apple finally rolled that out around the world. Now, another thing Apple introduced today are new home pods. So an all new version of the original home pod it's available now. And with this update comes support for that second generation home pod. It also adds a lot of different features to your existing HomePod mini. So that's something that's really nice that we have updates for. So it adds find my adds the ability to create home automations with your voice has remastered ambient sounds and also activates sensors for temperature and humidity in the home pod mini. So once it's updated to iOS 16.3, you should have all of those additional features. Those carry over to the latest features as well. So let's go ahead and 
turn this off as it seems to activate. And you'll have all of those features with your mini and the new home pod also, once you have that in store. So that will be available in February under settings. And then if we go down to emergency SOS, Apple has reworded this. So it says call withhold and release. And we also have a new option for call quietly. It says, if you start an emergency call using the gesture above warning alarms and flashes will be silenced. In addition to this, they've changed the way it works overall to enable emergency SOS. It now requires holding both the volume up or volume down button and the power sleep wake button. So if we hold both of those, then it will go into emergency SOS and we can activate it there. Now they've also fixed a bunch of things with this update. There's some significant things as well. The first one has to do with Freeform, and this carries across to iPad. So in Freeform, if maybe we create a new freeform board, sometimes when you're drawing, it wouldn't work properly. So those drawing strokes would sometimes not appear at all while you're drawing that should be updated and fixed as well as on the iPad. When you're using Apple pencil, that should be resolved as well for both devices. Now with a previous iOS update under settings, if you had an iPhone 14 pro or pro max with the always on display, you could show the wallpaper or turn off the always on display. However, there were some issues across all devices where sometimes the wallpaper would just appear black on the lock screen. That's actually been resolved in this update. It should work properly now. So if I turn on show wallpaper, you'll see it there. And so that should be fixed with 16.3. They've also specifically mentioned the horizontal line issue with the iPhone 14 pro max. So what that means is when you're waking up the phone, sometimes there would be horizontal lines in it. We've heard this complaint for a few weeks. Apple addressed it with this software update. They also fixed an issue with the home lock screen widget where it doesn't accurately display the home app status. So if we go into our widgets here, let's activate that customize and we'll customize this, maybe change to the home widget here. So we'll get rid of this one, put the light summary. Sometimes this wouldn't be accurate. Now it should be accurate if you're using those widgets. Also, they've addressed issues with Siri. This is something that seems to be a problem that was getting worse and worse. And they have finally fixed it where Siri wouldn't respond properly to music requests. They've fixed that. And they've also resolved an issue where Siri requests when you're using CarPlay wouldn't really be understood properly. That was an ongoing issue that's been fixed with 16.3. Now they haven't specifically mentioned any additional bug fixes. It will take a few days to know whether or not the issue is fixed when you're playing a song. So if I turn this down all the way, play a song, swipe home, and it goes into the dynamic Island. Sometimes that was very laggy that should be resolved in this update, but we don't really know that for sure. They haven't mentioned it specifically, but it is something that a lot of people complained about. Also, there was lag when scrolling and everything else. However, it seems to be fixed, but it could take a few days to know for sure. Additionally, there will be security updates in this update, but we won't know what those are until it releases to the public. So if we go to Apple's security website, as you can see here, they don't list anything just yet, but we should have some updates for this once it's available to the public stating what's actually fixed specifically. As far as overall performance, performance seems to be quite good. So far it's very, very smooth and we'll check benchmarks in a little bit, but so far everything seems to be responding as you would expect. Everything seems to be nice as fast as well. Overall heat does not seem to be really warm at all. In fact, it was warm right after installing. Now it's nice and cool. So it's cooling down quickly. Let's take a look. As I move the thermal camera around the hottest I'm seeing is about 85 degrees Fahrenheit, almost 86. So 85.9 or so as far as Celsius in the same general area, we have about 30.4 degrees Celsius at the warmest as far as battery life. Well, that's something that's been increasing a little bit for me, but hasn't been great. So it will take a few days to know that for sure. But if we go into battery, you'll see I'm down to 99% as far as battery health. And over the last 10 days, well, yesterday I had four hours and four minutes of screen active time, one hour and 33 minutes of screen idle time, and we're just above 50% usage. So that's actually not too bad. The day before three hours and 39 minutes with about the same amount of battery. Typically I'll go to bed at night with about 40 to 50% left. It's been getting better. As you can see here, the usage was quite heavy and it went down and is improving for me. As far as if you should install iOS 16.3 RC, well, if you're on 16.2, 
1.1 and you want to try it out, the release candidate is most likely the final release. So you could definitely try it out if you're a public beta tester or developer. However, you may want to wait just a few days to see if they have an additional update. Typically they won't have that though. At this point, I wouldn't expect an iOS 16.2.1 release. We thought we'd have that. It looks like they're jumping right to iOS 16.3. And I would expect iOS 16.3 as soon as Monday. Typically Apple has big releases on Mondays, so we could see it as soon as then if we don't have additional release candidates to go along with this. As far as iOS 16.4 betas, well, we could see those as soon as next week with some small features and updates, but until iOS 17, I don't really expect too many updates as far as that goes. So really, I don't think there'll be too much there. Of course, next week we will have the release of some new products as well from Apple. So of course we had that HomePod introduced, but we should have some new MacBook Pros and Mac Minis next week as well. So on 124 and then that HomePod is on February 3rd. So we'll have those new products to take a look at next week, probably at least a couple of them. And as far as overall benchmarks, well, let's take a look at that. Geekbench completed running and you can see the single core scores are 1,866, multi-core is 5,300. 368. If we take a look at the history compared to what we had before, let me just find it here as it's not exactly toward the top. You'll see it's about the same for single core and multi-core is actually a little bit better this time around. So that's good news. Everything seems to be nice and fast and smooth. It will take a few days to know how it is overall though. If you have anything else you found in iOS 16.3, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, it will be linked in the description as it always is. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.